man gets convicted to life in prison on drug charges firstly that's not true <laughs> my nana welcome back to my youtube channel it's me av and what are we doing today we're we're starting something new called a law student reacts i'm reacting to something um that was sent to me via instagram on dm and you know you guys can slide in my dms with some legal stories that you're not seeing coverage on and that's what we're doing today who are we talking about? We're talking about Fetty Wap. When I wake up in the morning, where's Khalifa, huh? yeah. You know, and, and here's why I wanted to cover this, because there's, there's some false information kind of floating around on the internet regarding this case. Do you want to know what that false information is? Or a headline that you see everywhere? That headline says, man gets convicted to life in prison on drug charges. Firstly, that's not true. <laughs> I'm here to also just debunk that and give you guys facts, right? It's a little bit different than a traditional case brief. Here's what we're gonna talk about. I'm gonna give you the facts on this particular case. I'm gonna give you the indictment and we'll talk a little bit about indictments and then we're gonna talk about plea bargains, okay? So super straightforward, but before you go anywhere else in this lovely internet space, I wanna make sure that you guys have the right facts uh, coming from a law student that has kind of uh, peeled back the, the layers of the onion, so to speak, so you guys don't have to. You're welcome. All right, let's talk about the facts on this one because it's a pretty juicy case. It really is. It really is, right? Um, so Fetty Wap was one of five co-defendants in this particular case. All right, what do they do? They were moving drugs from the West Coast to the East Coast, okay? So from Long Beach, California, all the way over to New Jersey. And if you know Fetty Wap, you know that he is a famous rapper. Um, major hits include 679, and I think the song that I was singing towards the beginning of this was called Wake Up. When I wake up in the morning. Like, it's a pretty good, it's a pretty good one. I do listen to that because I really don't wanna go to school tomorrow. <laughs> so it kinda reminds me of that. Anyway, back to the facts. He was charged with conspiring and possessing illegal substances. What does that mean? 220 pounds of illegal substances, including heroin, fentanyl, and crack cocaine, firearms, and there was also $1.5 million in cash. <laughs> okay, so this was all part of a drug ring. He was one of five co-defendants co that found this. So as you guys can imagine, this is gonna end up in federal court, especially because it involves interstate commerce. Two of the five co-defendants have already pled guilty. What you're hearing about in the news is Fetty Wap also pleading guilty. Here's what else you need to know. How do they transport these drugs? So there were two methods of kind of, of kind of moving them, right? First was USPS. So they were sending it in the mail, guys. Sending it in the mail, all right? So like, I don't even know how that happens, but anywho, they were sending this in the mail. The second method was by car. So this, the, the drugs were moving from the different coasts. So, you know, people would start in Long Beach in a car, right? The cars had specific special compartments, like little secret compartments, right? Like, you know, if you think about drugs that move around, like if you're smart enough and you can like stick it under, I don't know, I'm not trying to get you guys to, <laughs> to commit crimes here, but there are special places in which you can hide these things. I think that's what Fetty Wap and his friends did. He got arrested, this is in 2019, 2020, um, and I saw a lot of headlines where people were saying that he was facing life in jail, right? Um, I'm here to kind of, you know, myth bust that in a sense because that is not what was on, it could have been on the table, but that's not what's on the table right now, recently in August of 2022. Why is Fetty Wap in jail? Well, he was able to post bond and that was 500,000 and he used a home in Georgia to, to secure that. Right? Here is the best part. <laughs> Uh, and I don't know why criminal defendants do this, and I'm not judging anybody here, but basically he violated his bail. When you are out on bail, you have um, their specific terms. Basically, don't break the law while you're out, right? Uh, what did Fetty Wap do? He kind of broke the law, he broke the law, he broke the law a little bit, just a little bit, just a smidge. No, he did, he did. Here's what he did. He threatened to murder a man on FaceTime. Hey, dude, I'm gonna kill you. Apparently the court found out about that and because he violated his bail, he was back in jail, right? And that is where he is right now, awaiting sentencing. So let's talk about the indictment. Okay, 
Firstly, what is an indictment, okay? And what's the difference between a grand jury and a trial jury? I think there's two things you need to consider. The first thing, when we think about juries, we think that it's just one body, right? There are two types. You have a grand jury that's typically involved in federal uh, court, but sometimes it could be outside of that. Um, sometimes it could be civil. But what you have with the grand jury is um, the beginning of a trial. They are involved at the beginning of a trial. When you have a traditional trial jury, that's more where they're kind of collecting facts but they deliberate and make decisions at the end of a trial right so those are the two main differences between a grand jury and a trial jury now what happens with this grand jury here this grand jury has to agree to bring down the charges for Fetty Wap right uh, so here there are two counts right and the other thing too is before I get there let's talk about an indictment what is an indictment an indictment is basically looking at the charges of what the grand jury decides that the criminal defendant should be charged with. So here we have two counts. The first count is conspiracy to distribute and possess controlled substances. So, you know, I talked to you guys about it. What did we find? We found crack, cocaine, fentanyl, <laughs> all types of things, all types of drugs were found, right? And the FBI found these drugs. Okay, uh, so pretty sure that that is a thorough investigation, but one never knows, right? One never knows, right? What's the second count? The second count that was found in this indictment was the use of firearms in connection with drug trafficking crimes. So that's the other thing. There's firearms here. Um, you know, I didn't get into the weeds uh, um, in the indictment to really see if those were registered firearms, things like that. Chances are that they weren't. Um, so here's what we'll do as well. I'm actually going to link the indictment, so if you guys want to see the original document, you'll be able to do that as well. Shout out to Law & Crime for posting these items online, uh, but I will go ahead and link that in the description box. So if you guys are curious cats and you want to see what's going on there, you'll be able to do that as well. Let's move on and talk about the plea bargain, the concept of plea bargaining, and what's really happening. Because people are saying they got sentenced to life and that is not true. Plea bargaining! What is a plea bargain? Well, a plea bargain is when the state or government body that is trying a criminal defendant will agree with you to give you a lesser amount of time if you plead guilty to a particular crime, right? Um, in this particular case, we are moving forward with the conspiracy to possess uh, conspiracy and the possession of controlled substances, okay? So what is what does that look like? That means that the minimum sentencing requirement for something like this is five years. And according to federal law, there could be an additional two years. Here's the thing about federal court. You know, if you commit a crime in a state, then you are subject to that state's law, that, that state's criminal law. If you do something federally, and in this case, the reason why it's in federal court is, you know, controlled substances, like you have certain drugs that just, you just don't do it. Just don't do it, right? Just don't do it at all, right? Uh, but there's also interstate commerce involved here because here's what's happening. Not only did you use the postal service, which is a government entity, you're also moving in between states, right? So, you know, now you can't apply all these different states' laws. You have to go with federal law. Those charges seem to be a little bit more serious and a little bit more heavy, right? So no wonder why there was a plea bargain here. So that way uh, there is an opportunity to kind of look at the time that he's facing and hey, you know, for for criminal defendants, if you don't want to spend all of your time in, in the pen, right, or incarcerated, you do have an opportunity to come out. I think Fetty Wap is something like 30 years old um, or something like that. I really don't know, and I'm probably going to dig into this for you guys, where that life sentencing thing kind of came from. But you know, when somebody sent me this on Instagram, I was just like, life, life for controlled substances. It just kind of didn't make sense. So I wanted to dig into this case a little bit more for you guys and give you some quick little nuggets, you know, get a little bit of tea, just a little bit of tea. In my case, coffee. As far as a law student reacting to this, that's what I thought. I, I was scrolling through my phone, I was just like, what? This doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't. So I wanted to give you guys a little bit of color when it comes to this stuff. And if you like these type of videos, please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if you want me to cover more celebrity uh, cases, 
please feel free to find me on Instagram at AV to the seventh power. Leave a comment here. Um, and you can also just let me know, like if there's something you want me to cover that you're not seeing. And like I said, we saw that with Nipsey Hussle. There was barely any information on it. Thank you guys for watching. More to come. I have case briefs coming for you. I also have a time savers video. And of course, you could subscribe to my podcast at AV to the seventh podcast. What do I talk about my podcast? I talk about personal development and growth. Check it out. I've got some really cool guests. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hope you have a really great Labor Day weekend. See you soon. Bye.